Everybody, hey, welcome to May 1st. It's May Day. And uh, glad you're with us today as we look at what's happening in the marketplace. Uh, we'll talk about uh, what's happening with Dave here in just a few seconds. Before we do, though, let's not forget that there are so many things in this world that you and I, we have no control over. However, you can take control of your investment portfolio. You need to know what the risk is in your portfolio, and you need to know what your risk should be based on your current circumstances. That's why I developed the core retirement design. Give us a call at 863 382-0037 to schedule your core retirement analysis. <clears throat> that Dave, we got Dave coming up next. Our Lynn is there. It's 8.40 here now, 20 before 9. Time to check in on your money. Assuming, of course, well, let's see here, just a minute here. For some reason, my money number isn't coming up. There we go. Sometimes you have to do things the hard way to get things running around here. Kick hell on the butt, he'll do anything I tell him to. Let's check in with Philip Statler from Statler Financial Services in downtown Sebring. Philip, the market worked kind of like my computer does this morning. Not very good yesterday. Would that be a fair description? That would be definitely a fair description. They were not happy campers uh, yesterday in the trading field. This was it was an El Pupo day again. We can say good riddance to April. The Dow was down. We'll get back up to the uh, yesterday closes here. I was looking at the futures and saying I'm not happy with them either. Dow was down by almost a full percent and a half, down 570 points yesterday. Uh, the Standard and Poor's was down even a bigger percentage number, down 80 points, and Nasdaq over two percent, 325 points down. Outside of the fact that we had some reports that weren't exactly what they were looking for, we had uh, that uh, employment cost number that started the week out, and I found a chart as to probably why it scared them so darn much. There was a pretty resilient trend downward on labor costs through the year 2023 into 2024, and last month it just completely reversed the trend. Uh, the chart makes it look even better when you start measuring in tenths of a percent, but it really was a turnaround as far as labor costs were concerned, and it really scared the pants off a lot of investors, didn't it? Well, it, it really did, and it um, and, and labor costs has been one of the driving forces we've seen for inflation. And mm -hmm. so what that really tells the folks out there trading stocks is that uh, the Fed's going to look at that number, and, and that, that's going to be an inflationary uh, uh, impact. And so that, that kind of turns the trend a little bit. Now, obviously, one, one month or one number doesn't make a trend, but uh, obviously that was going the wrong direction. And, uh, and let's just add that the Russell 2000 was down a little over 2% yesterday as well. No oh, poop. Yeah, it, it, it probably it, that's a number that generally you and I look at and kind of brush off. It doesn't have much of an impact, but when it comes out on the first day of an open market committee for the Federal Reserve, where they're trying to decide whether or not we got a prayer of an interest rate cut, it just it, it just kind of came out like the final chapter in a murder mystery and made everybody sit up and take notice. Probably almost timing more than the actual event. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that was um, it not not just wasn't good news for the, for the <laughs> markets. And so we'll continue to see what happens. I mean, we still got more numbers to come out for uh, the first quarter. And um, and those numbers are going to be uh, vitally important to the Fed as they continue to meet. Absolutely, because we've got we still got second and third look at the inflation rates and uh, second and third look at the uh, gross domestic product, and it's going to be interesting. And we're going to get all of it in a big ball this afternoon at two thirty when uh, Jay Powell has a press conference after they announce their decision for interest rates. And one more ingredient goes in this morning that's probably not going to help the market anyway. ADP's employment number, the number of private sector jobs added to the market last month, they estimate 192,000 new private sector jobs. And that's well above what was expected again. So one more indication that the employment market you know, good news, bad news, good news for anybody looking for a job, but bad news for companies looking to uh, control their costs. They're, we're still hiring people like it's going out of style, aren't we? Well, we are. There's fewer people out there to fill the jobs we do have, and to find the right person, the qualified person, uh, has become more difficult with that, that being said. 
you know, you, you we talked about the labor costs going up, and, and I wonder mm-hmm. if this other number that came out, I just saw this, came out at 10 o'clock yesterday morning, consumer confidence number yesterday. That's right, that was due it yesterday, fell, wasn't it? It fell drastically um, from 103 to 97. Doesn't seem like a big number, but when you're talking about confidence, that that's a big uh, twist downward, um, and, and that could have uh, heaped on to the labor number yesterday. Which actually, when you think about it, given the fact that we're making more money, income's increasing, spending is staying healthy, I would have kind of expected with the labor cost report coming out and increased wages to workers on balance, that consumer confidence may may not have gone up by much, but I would have expected it to go in the other direction, wouldn't you? Well, a little bit. Other than if you look at some of the other, um, you know, McDonald's mentioned it yesterday. Uh, I saw another headline. Another company mentioned it that the um, lower socioeconomic level, the they are getting squeezed worse and worse, and so. Um, their spending is being uh, really downgraded, and McDonald's really saw that in their report. And we heard, we talked about it, about the fact that, you know, with the increase in wages, the amount of money they make off a of burger goes down, wages and prices had to go up. And uh, they that ended up making, like I said, Big Mac and the Fries for 10 bucks is not something that exactly is, a, is frittering money, especially if you're a little tight to begin with. Exactly. And so I think that... Consumer confidence number kind of does reflect, um, you know, people having a more difficult time. Absolutely. Speaking of people not having a difficult time, we were kind of guesstimating whether or not uh, Amazon was going to have to declare a dividend in order to uh, prompt their stock up. Evidently not, because they kind of kicked butt yesterday, didn't they? They did, and they didn't announce a dividend either, did they, Dave? They didn't need to the way they went, did they? <laughs> no. Earnings up uh, came in at 98 cents a share versus 83 cents expected. Uh, they beat earn, uh, revenue by almost, not quite, but almost a billion dollars. Um, and, and so their web services business saw a huge increase as well. Their, avenue, their advertising revenue was up a little bit too. They've cut spending, which has been good. Uh, and so they uh, they continue to see uh, some some big moves. And, and yesterday was one of those days. Uh, they were up quite a bit. They're up another three uh, percent this morning. I found it interesting that the uh, web services were growing. Is I remember a quarter or two ago they had a little bit of a challenge on their web services number, and we were thinking that it might mean more tigers in the jungle. But as established as they are, evidently using their web services for a lot of the AI applications that are out there is kind of helping them grow. Established uh, established capacity with all that AI does is probably helping them, wouldn't you think? I, I think so. They're obviously getting more traction there. Um, uh, probably, I'm going to say, Dave, our big winner for the day. <clears throat> you thought okay. maybe Amazon was a big winner, but our big winner for the day. Because from here, I got losers, okay? Pinterest. <laughs> okay. Pinterest, Pinterest, big, big winner. Um, they beat on top and bottom line for the first quarter. Second quarter revenue expectations for the for their forecast surpassed the expectations of the analyst. Um, they uh, forecasting between eight hundred and thirty to eight hundred fifty million dollars of revenue versus the estimate of one hundred and twenty seven or eight hundred twenty seven million dollars. So some good news there. Um, they're actually up today 15.4% this morning. Wow, lest you were like me and thought that it was Facebook and all the dwarfs, right? Yeah, you know, Pinterest, I mean, it. it uh, I use it to find, uh, you know, dry rub recipes and, you know, what's the best way to, to smoke your, your chicken or your beef or, uh, you know, I, I use it for that kind of stuff. I got to double check and move into the current century and try it. <laughs> okay, we got a whole bunch of crummy news, I gather, for the rest of the reports we have time for. Who who was our big loser for the week? Well, it's a it's a it's a toss up between Starbucks and uh, and CVS. Um, hmm. So CVS, uh, they they had a uh, a, a rough quarter. 
they missed expectations on both revenue and on earnings. Um, they came in at a dollar thirty one versus a dollar sixty nine they were expected to make. I mean, that's a pretty big miss, Dave. Uh, revenue missed as well. Uh, they were trading down. Uh, well, they're still about the same ballpark. Twelve point nine percent right now. They're down. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, un- the uncharitable question occurs to me. How can a drugstore screw up when they own their own insurance company? Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> just, just, CVS yeah. for you. Question begs. What can I say? Yeah. All right. Then we had Starbucks. Uh, they had weaker than expected earnings and revenue as well. Uh, they missed earnings by about um, 11 cents a share. They came in at 68 cents a share. Revenue, oh my goodness, they were off by, oh, about $700 million. Uh, that's a lot of coffee, right? Um, Even at their same, prices. Yeah, same store sales declined uh, more than expected. Uh, they're trading down today 13.5%. Gosh, just merry sunshine all over the place. One or two I told more. you. I told you yeah. it was tough. Tough crowd today. Um, Marriott. Marriott, um, they came in uh, and missed on earnings and revenue as well, and uh, they they had uh, and they missed on their guidance day. They just can't win. Um, they expect this current quarter to earn two dollars and forty three cents to two dollars and forty eight cents somewhere in that ballpark. Analysts expect them to earn two dollars and fifty two cents this next quarter. Um, and so a miss there, that's got them down about one and three quarters percent this morning uh, before we start trading. And then the last one I will leave you with is Kraft, um, I'm sorry, Yum, Yum Brands, because we've got a Taco Bell and a KFC here. Um, they, uh, they earned $1.15 a share. They missed by five cents a share. A revenue missed by about $100 million. Um, and that's got Yum Brands trading down almost 5% this morning. I'm going to kind of bet they got about the same story to tell McDonald's did. What do you think? Well, that's you're, you're right. Because those are, especially <laughs> the Taco Bell. I mean, that's a, that's where, you know, an inexpensive meal. And, and I think their prices probably have to go up like everybody else. Absolutely. Reset in the table. It was just solid poop yesterday on all of the indexes. 45 minutes before we opened this morning. What are we looking at? Well, we got a tinge of green ink um, before we get going today. The Dow Jones Industrial 30 is off by $27, down about a tenth of a percent this morning. S&P 500 is down two tenths. The NASDAQ 100 is down by a third of a percent. And the Russell 2000 is actually a little bit flat this morning. On the other side of the coin, we've got silver up two tenths, gold's up three tenths. Crude oil, Dave, you got to jump up and down about crude oil today. Down 1.5%, down to $80.69, Dave. It's trying. It's trying to get past 80. Go 79. Right. Feeling like I'm cheering at a ball game. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, I'm down to a quarter tank of gas. Let's go to 79. <laughs> uh, let's see overseas markets. Europe was generally not or the Asian Rim, generally not impressed whatsoever by our yesterday. Almost every single index was down. Uh, The Hong Kong exchange was the only one that eked out again, and they were just bearably in green ink. We're talking about up to a full percent and more over on the Asian Rim. On the European theater, they're not very happy either. I'm almost solid negative red ink as well in that direction. Uh, The U.K. is up by a little bit this morning. Everybody else is off by about a tenth of a percent or so halfway through their trading day this morning. Keeping tabs on your retirement plan, that's better if you got an expert set of eyes to look where the risk is. How do I find you to get that expert set of eyes to look at mine, Philip? Dave, then give us a call at 863-382-0037 to schedule their core retirement design, where we'll help them design the retirement they always dreamed of. Uh, again, this weekend, the Statler Financial Radio Show, 6 a.m. and noon on Saturday, 10 a.m. Sunday morning, on Highlands News Talk 730, 95.3 FM. And you and me back again tomorrow morning tell you what the Fed did and a whole lot more what's likely to affect your money tomorrow here on Light. I will see you then. Fair enough? All right, buddy. Have a great day.
Thank you. It's 105.7 Light FM and Statler Financial Services, Philip Statler.